Hello everyone, I'm Robin the Delta Crafter and I want to thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making a birthday card and I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a birthday card little series here for a while on my channel. So we're going to get started with this card today. For making this card, we're going to be using the Color Block Balloons uh, die set by Spellbinders. Now this is not a brand new set. This set has been out for a while, but I haven't used it um, before and I'm anxious to see what I can create with this balloon set. So for this card, I've decided to stay within different shades of one color. So we're going to be using shades of peach for this balloon, um, or for these balloons for this card. So I'm going to use those um, with like a really pale peach and then a darker peach. And then I'm going to add in some metallic gold as well. So I've chosen, to, chosen a couple of dies and I've placed those on my cardstock. And I'm going to be I use some uh, Easy C tape to hold them in place. I decided to run all of those dies through my uh, compact cutter from Hero Arts. I love the ease of having this small machine that I can use with dies of this size. So I'm going to run all of those dies through my um, compact cutter with this solid cardstock. And I'm going to create a little pile of those die cuts over to the side. I decided to use this printed acetate that I had in my stash and have had for a while because it was a perfect complement to these balloons. This, is, this acetate is covered with um, gold foil numbers, and so I thought that would be perfect to go along with the birthday theme of this card. I pulled out my utility knife to do the final cuts to release the balloons. For the design of this card, I decided I wanted some solid color balloons as well as some balloons where their color blocking was on display. So I'm going to put some Barely Arts glue on one of the backers for the balloons and then I'm going to use my jewel picker to pick up some of the pieces that are going to kind of interlock together to create this balloon. So I started with that darkest peach color and then I moved on to the pale peach, the lightest shade. And I'm going to add in a couple of layers, or at least one layer, of the metallic gold. And then I'm going to repeat those colors until I get a completed balloon. Now you may notice here that my backer piece is a little bit larger than the balloon. I ended up choosing the backer piece that was not the correct size. But I'm going to take it, uh, bring in my precision scissors later on and kind of trim that area, that extra white part off. And then you'll never know that that happened. So we have one of the um, ruffled balloons, I guess that's what we're going to call that one, um, finished. And then I'm going to assemble a couple more of those balloons with those remaining pieces that I have right over there to the side. So we've finished that third balloon. We're going to put place our acrylic block on top of it to make sure that everything kind of secures as the glue is drying. And then we're going to move on to adding the little... Um, knotted part of the balloon to each balloon that we've created. So I'm going to add just a dab of the Barely Arts glue to the little knotted piece down there and I'm going to place my balloon on top of that and make sure that it's nice and secure before I move on to adding the next little knotted piece to the rest of the balloons. I'll use some reverse tweezers to hold everything in place while the glue dries. Once, while that is drying, we're going to go ahead and create our background. So I wanted a little bit of a sky detail in the background of our card. So I'm going to bring in this cloud stencil from My Favorite Things, and I'm going to create some clouds on my background using the Salvage Patina Distress Ink. I've had this stencil for quite a while, and I absolutely love it. It is definitely one of my uh, favorite stencils to reach for when I'm wanting some sort of cloud detail. So I didn't want like a, a stark, like white to salvage patina kind of look. So I'm just going to lay down a very light layer of the salvage patina, and then I'm going to come back in with the cloud stencil using the same salvage patina ink and I'm going to add some some cloud details with the stencil to the background. So it's going to be like color on top of color, kind of monochromatic, with, but with a little bit of detail with uh, the cloud stencil. One of the things I love about this stencil is that it is four-sided. So the 
each side has a different kind of cloud detail to it. And I absolutely love that I can twist this around and I can flip it over and get different kind of cloud creations from one stencil. So I've finished my background and now it's time to move on to adding our sentiment. So off camera, I trimmed down our panel using the small stitch rectangle dies from Lawn Fawn. I love the little stitching detail that these dies have and that we can get on the edge of our card. The stamp set that I'm using is brand new, so I'm using a little sander to clean off that factory film that will kind of prevent the ink from adhering to our stamp. By the way, this is a happy birthday sentiment stamp from Simon Says Stamp. It was a complimentary set, but I think it's available on the website. I'll link this as well as all the products below that I can find in the description box as well as on the coordinating blog post. So for, for today's sentiment, we're going to be heat embossing our sentiment. So we're bringing in some Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky embossing ink, and we're going to stamp happy birthday on our panel using this ink. Before I stamped it though, I did hit my um, background with my rabbit hole designs powder tool to make sure that my embossing powder only sticks where I, I want it to stick, which would be in the stamped area. So now that we've got our sentiment stamp, I'm going to bring in some gold embossing powder. This is an embossing powder that I had in my stash for a while. And I'm going to sprinkle that all over my um, stamped area. And you can see there we get a beautiful result with that happy birthday stamp. Um, my heating tool has been heating up over to the side, so I'm going to bring that in and heat from the back first for a few few seconds. And then I'm going to bring my heat tool to the front and com finish completely melting the embossing powder to get our heat embossed sentiment. We are now at the assembly stage of this card. So I'm going to bring in some uh, really thin foam squares, and I'm going to place those on the back of just a couple of the balloons. The ones that I really want to be popped up. So some of the balloons are going to be um, kind of secured to the card panel. Some of them are gonna be popped up and that clear balloon is gonna be popped up but it's or appear like it's floating but there won't be any adhesive showing behind it. So I've added some those foam squares to the balloons that I want um, to be popped up. And now I'm adding some Barely Arts glue to the balloon that'll be secured to the card base. And using this press and seal that I've kind of laid all the balloons out on, I'm going to use that as a handle to bring my balloons to the panel. Before I uh, press them down completely, I'm just kind of looking through the press and seal to make sure that I like the placement of the balloons and then I'm gonna press everything down to the panel. I'm gonna slowly pull the press and seal back and notice that the acetate balloon kinda of comes up with the press and seal. So this is where I'm going to pull it back just a tiny bit and I'm going to add some of that Barely Arts glue just behind the number so that it secures the balloon, that acetate balloon to that darker peach balloon. Having that needle tip on my Barely Arts glue affords me the ability to just put the tiniest amount of glue right behind that gold foil number on my acetate balloon. And you never even know that that's how the balloon is secured to the card base. So I've got my little streamers here for the balloons and I'm trying to, I'm trying to test out where I want them to be. I think I like the placement, but I haven't glued them down yet. So I'm going, before, and before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and flip my panel over and put some of my tape runner on the back of my plant panel and secure it to the card base. Bringing in the Barely Arts glue again, I'm going to put some little dots of glue on the back of my streamers and secure those in place on the card. The last step is to trim the excess streamers from the panel, and with that, this card is complete. I hope you have enjoyed watching me make this birthday card. If you have, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment below and let me know what your favorite part of the card is. Thank you for joining me for another video on my YouTube channel. You can find all the products I use today listed and linked below or in the coordinating blog post. 
You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Delta Crafter, as well as on my website at thedeltacrafter.com. Be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified of when I post my next video. Until next time, everyone, enjoy. Bye-bye.